the Brothers of Liberty, here to remind you what true freedom is. Hello and welcome to another edition of Brothers of Liberty with the older brother Kelton here. Um, today's video is going to be a little bit long, uh, do apologize for that, but I want to get all the information that I found out um, when people ask why is this so important. Um, read an article from The Hill that the Biden administration is suing Missouri over their gun rights bills they passed in 2021. The Department of Justice is suing Missouri over its gun rights bill that passed last year allows citizens to sue state and federal agencies for $50,000 if they prove their Second Amendment rights were violated. Now, the article itself actually got it wrong. Now, 50000 is not is not a, a lawsuit. That's actually a civil penalty, a fine that Missouri enacts on any employee. Um, now, the citizens are allowed to sue, but that's even for more money. <clears throat> Attorney General Garland announced the lawsuit Wednesday, saying House Bill 85 violates the Supremacy Clause, is preempted by federal law, and violates the doctrine of intergovernmental immunity. And we'll get to go. We'll get to those too. DOJ states the bill hurts cooperation between federal, state, and local law enforcement, which is a complete utter lie. The DOJ states the law prompted state and local agencies and individuals within those entities to withdraw support for federal law enforcement efforts. The DOJ opposed the law since 2021 and told the court the law is unconstitutional last August. So let's see if it's really unconstitutional. And I'll have all the links in my description, including the law the Supremacy Clause, and everything else that I go over today. Uh, Missouri House Bill 85, Second Amendment P Preservation Act. Now, I'm not going to read the whole summary, but just key parts of it to discredit that article. Here goes one part. Any public officer or state or local employee who tries to enforce the firearms law declared invalid by the act or any person who acts under the color of law to deprive a Missouri citizen the right or privilege ensured by the federal and state constitutions shall be subject to a civil penalty of 50000 per employee hired by the law enforcement agency. Remember, that penalty is a fine. Now, additionally, a person shall have standing to pursue an action for injunctive relief in the circuit court. That's where it allows a person to sue. But it could be more or less than $50,000. Now, also summary of the rest of it, um, it states that um, there'll be no violation of this act to provide federal officials with where the, there is criminal nexus. See that? No violation. And not a violation for felony crimes involving weapons violations. So where it's trying to say that it's going to hinder all agencies that no, it even says it's not, clearly says it's not a violation. Now Garland actually tries to talk about the supremacy clause. Well, let's see what the Supremacy Clause says. And it's funny how he says Supremacy Clause because most people don't realize all that is is Article 6, Paragraph 2 of the United States Constitution. And this is what it reads verbatim from the United States Constitution. It's Constitution, comma, and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land, and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby, anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary notwithstanding. You notice that this Constitution, comma, so Constitution comes first before any federal law after the Constitution. Keep that in mind. Now, according to Cornell Law School, they say that the Supremacy Clause establishes that the federal Constitution and federal law generally, not always, takes precedence over state laws and even state constitutions. It prohibits states from interfering with the federal government's exercise of its constitutional powers and from assuming any functions that are exclusively entrusted to the federal government. It does not, however, allow the federal government to review or veto state laws before they take effect. That's the supremacy clause that he wants to point out. Then he also points out the intergovernmental immunity doctrine, which is not even an official document. It was actually a Supreme Court case ruling about a state trying to tax a federal bank, a, a bank that was run by the federal government. Um, the Supreme Court case was McCullough versus Maryland in 1819. Um, a state, he stated that states may not regulate property or operations of the federal government. And it, the case itself is frequently evoked in taxation cases. 
Uh, now, multiple sources describe the principle that prevents federal government and individual state governments from intruding on one another's sovereignty. It's intended to keep government agencies from restricting the rights of other government agencies. Now, Justice Marshall, in his opinion, wrote that the ruling that in the ruling that the people rather than the states are responsible for ratifying the United States Constitution, and thus taking away a measure of sovereignty from the states. So even when he ruled, he was talking about the people ratified the Constitution, which means he was going for the people. What does it say in the Second Amendment? The right of the people to bear arms shall not be infringed. Let's go on. Now they're like, well, if the scout's suing the Missouri, that's going to go to court, so they're going to look at every case. Well, let's look at another Supreme Court case. Uh, well, actually, we'll look at a law first called the Brady Act. If you're not familiar with the Brady Act, this was the, it's called the Brady Handgun Violence Prevention Act. And it was to establish background checks and force all state and local agencies to do background checks. Um, now, the law was passed in 1993. And the law required firearm distributor would need to notify a local law enforcement officer of the buyer residence and provide a copy of the Brady form. The officer had five business days to make a reasonable effort to determine whether the buyer possession of a firearm would violate the Gun Control Safety Act of 1968. And this square goes to Prince versus the United States in 1997, where two local law enforcement officers, one from Arizona, one from Montana, Prince was being the main one, so they put his name on it, um, took it all the way up to the Supreme Court. And it's, this is what the Supreme Court ruled. The Supreme Court told that the law violates the Tenth Amendment. And if those who uh, are unfamiliar with the Tenth Amendment, the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectfully or to the people. Um, the federal government cannot issue directives requiring the states to address particular problems or command state officials to enforce a federal regulatory program. Now, all gun laws and stuff falls under the ATF, which is a federal regulatory program, um, which they called it in here. Um, now, local law enforcement could do it voluntarily, but they cannot force the it cannot be forced by the federal government, which is pretty much what the state of Missouri is saying. You cannot force us to do this, and you cannot violate the Second Amendment, which is part of the Constitution, which is the supreme law of the land, as in Supremacy Clause State. That comes first before every other law. And uh, Justice um, Antoine Siscalia, and I know I'm killing his name, this is what he had to say about when, he, when they made the ruling. Um, he placed a substantial weight on the dual sovereignty principle that divides authority between the federal government and the states. He argued that the concept was critical to the success of a federalism structure on which the American system of government was founded. According to historic analysis, the framers meant to limit federal authority, and if you read their journals, that's what they were trying to do. Rather, authority to international and interstate affairs rather than controlling the operation of state officials like police officers within states. So, and uh, that link would also be up so you can read the rest of what he said. So, what does that mean? That means, technically, the attorney general who's supposed to know the law of the land don't have a leg to stand on. Because it's violating the Second Amendment. It's violating the Tenth Amendment. He tried to use cases, which they even say that the reason why they ruled in favor was because they're ruling for the people, not for the states. But he's going to ignore the people thing and just say, well, see, they gave us all the powers. But with the Brady Act, which was a gun rule, mind you, the Supreme Court said, eh, -eh federal government cannot control the states when it comes to that. And then you have state constitutions about their militia. The Second Amendment clearly states a well-regulated militia, comma, be necessary to the security of a free state, not free federal government, a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, everybody always want to com complain, well, the, that's not going to military. No. Historic context militia was never run by the federal government. Um, it was always by the states, and it was always normal people. Movies always depicted 
that militia was farmers with pitchforks. Um, even in writings, if you look at all the battles, militia would always falter where the Continental Army was disciplined. The reason this was is because it was civilians. Uh, militia, cha the Congress changed the way militias were in 1903 when they created the National Guard. Um, so there was actually an organized training because when states were sending their militias, volunteers, mind you, not soldiers, volunteers for everyday life um, with their own guns because they were not given guns by the federal government. Um, there was always difference of training and everything else. So they had to make it uniform so there would be no confusion and to make sure that they could fight just like federal army. So that's the only reason why we have a National Guard. Look it up um, if you don't believe me. Um, so yes, militia was never a organized uh, an organized structure. It was always loosely based. It was always the people and farmers and masonaries and ranchers and in any walks of life, pretty much. So uh, with that being said, um, this is just the DOJ doesn't like the fact that the Missouri is upholding the United States Constitution, which is the supreme law of the land, and mad because they're saying do not infringe on the Second Amendment, which is the Constitution of uh, which is in the Constitution in the Bill of Rights. But hey, that's just my opinion on it. If you have a difference of opinion, feel free to comment. Um, we always love discourse on here. Um, and if you have, like I said, like, share, subscribe, and if you have any topics you want us to discuss or just information you want us to pass along, brothers of liberty 76 at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. And once again, this is the older brother of liberty reminding you what true freedom is and ought to be.